All right, guys, lesson seven is going to be on electronegative differences. So we're going to be talking about bond polarity, the scale of electronegativity, determining the type of bond based on its difference, and a phrase called ionic character. Polarity, the relative orientation of poles using opposing charges, the direction of a magnet or electric field. So it's like a positive and a negative being attracted to one another. Our planet, for example, has a north and south pole, which is ironically also a positive and negative charge. The northern part of a magnet is going to be positively charged, while the southern part will be negatively charged. So when we talk about polarity, we're talking about electrostatic attractions. So when we calculate the bond polarity, you have to find the electronegativity differences between the two atoms in the bond. A bond can only be created between two atoms, guys. So when we do this, we're going to be looking a lot at nonmetals and nonmetals when they're bonded together for covalent bonds. So if you take the larger of your electronegative number and you subtract from the smaller, and the number is less than 0 0.4, we call these bonds nonpolar covalent. If we also do that subtraction again from larger and smaller, and the difference is between 0 0.4 and 2.0, we call these bonds polar covalent. And if the difference between the larger and smaller electronegativity is over 2.0, we refer to these bonds as ionic. Nonpolar covalent bonds are a type of chemical bond where two nonmetal atoms share a pair of electrons with each other equally. Uh, equal sharing of electrons means that there is no polarity so no positive or negative charges because there's that equal distribution of the electrical charge. One of the main types of nonpolar covalent bonds, they will always be found in your diatomic molecules. Frankelhoff. So that's hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, nitrogen, bromine, and iodine. Those seven make up all the nonpolar covalent bonds that are naturally found. We also have something called a polar covalent bond, and that's where two atoms are bonded, but the bond has an unequal distribution of charge. So if you notice on the right, we have a water molecule. So when we look at our water molecule, you're noticing that there is a charge on water, both a positive and negative charge. And that is because the oxygen and hydrogens have varying or different electronegativities. The oxygen is gonna be more powerful, it's got a higher electronegativity, so the hydrogens are being pulled towards it. This causes what we call a slight electrical dipole, or a dipole-dipole charge. That means that one end of your molecule will be slightly positive and the other will be slightly negative. This means that they will attract ionic compounds. Why will they attract ionic compounds? Well, for example, if you take water and you drop salt into it, when the salt dissolves in water, the positive sodiums will be attracted to the negative side of the oxygen. Ooh, because like a magnet, positive and negative attract. Exactly. So looking again just at these visuals, when we have a nonpolar bond, for example, between two carbons, the electrons are being shared equally. But in the case of like a hydroxide, which is a base or an alcohol, you're noticing that there is a difference in their sharing Thus, one side is negatively charged and the other is going to be positively charged. Just remember, guys, whenever you see nonpolar covalent, that means there's equal distribution of electrical charge versus polar covalent, which is unequal distribution of electrical charge. And just to go over all three types of bonds, when we have a nonpolar covalent bond, again, there's equal sharing between the two atoms. There are going to be no charges. The entire compound should be neutral. When we have that polar covalent bond, we have those dipoles. That means one portion of the molecule is positive while the other is going to be negative. And when we talk about ionic bonds, that electrostatic attraction, that physical taking of one of those or one or more electrons, that's going to occur only in ionic bonds. If you're trying to decide in a polar covalent bond which side is negative and positive, remember, the more electronegative will become slightly negative, while the less electronegative will become slightly positive. So there will be questions on the regions, for example, that ask you to determine the ionic character of a bond. 
which basically says the greater the difference in electronegativity, the more ionic the different bonds are. So here are three different examples. We have a fluorine-fluorine bond, a hydrogen-fluorine bond, and a lithium-fluorine bond. When you take the difference of fluorine to fluorine, you should get zero, which is not ionic because it's nonpolar covalent. Then when you take the difference of hydrogen and fluorine, you get something around 1.8, which is polar covalent, so somewhat ionic. And then finally, you take the difference of lithium and fluorine, you get 3.0, which is clearly in the ionic zone. Again, metal, non-metal though as well, right? Mm -hmm. And as you're noticing, all these bonds have fluorine in it, but as you change the electronegativity, they go up in difference, which means they become more ionic. So we're going to do some practice problems that we want you guys to do in your notebook. So as we see already, we have two elements, selenium and arsenic. When they're in a bond, selenium and arsenic have a difference of 0 0.4, which is what we call polar covalent. In the second example, we have it between bromine and chlorine. That difference is a 0 0.2, which means that these are a nonpolar covalent bond. Using reference table S to find the electronegative differences, figure them out and figure out what kind of bond is in the remaining examples. Always subtract the larger number from the smaller number because these numbers are always going to be an absolute value.